Listen, H Girl 30 here, and this is another mini QA number 73, I believe. If I'm wrong, I'll change in the title. But I the word, guys, thank you so much for sending me your questions. Thank you all for your support. As usual, for those that send me questions, you guys will be credited on the end credits of this QA. So let's get started with this QA. And my first set of questions comes from Lonnie Lull. Um which girls is hotter, Sabrina Carpenter or Rowan Blanchard, a.k.a. Maya and Riley? Honestly, it's kind of weird for me to even say which is hotter because they're babies. Well, they're babies compared to my age. Um, What would happen if slavery was brought back? Um, no offense. Um, Dude, really? Really? Let's put it this way. Okay, since you asked a logical question, if slavery was brought back i wouldn't be talking to you right now shoot i wouldn't even have any rights let alone a job or be making money or being on youtube i would pretty much be a slave pretty much <laughs> but yeah that answers your question um what do you think of rise little brother i like augie they kind of changed his, um, they changed the script a little bit more on him. And he's not as boring and as weird as he usually is. Well, he usually was towards the beginning of the show for the first three episodes. But I think they kind of improved his character a lot. And I actually like him. He's kind of cute. Um, especially for, like, the emotional parts of the show. He's kind of somewhat comic relief. But my next set of questions comes from Little Fish. Um, do you think Paul Heyman looks weird without his ponytail? Yes. <laughs> well... Honestly, no. He looks bald with his ponytail and looks even more bald without it. So I don't think it'll be a difference if he cuts it off. That's just me. Uh, what did you think of the Brady Bunch and the Brady Bunch theme song? Can you sing it? Um, well, the Brady Bunch was an okay show for his time. I didn't, I wasn't a huge fan of it because it was just too hokey and cookie cutter for me. But it, if around the 70s or whatever time it was started, I think it was probably around the 70s. People will honestly like it, but eh, it's like meh with me. And as for the theme song, the theme song was pretty cool. It's very iconic in pop culture, especially American pop culture, and it's very catchy. Do I rem do, Can I sing it? Well, I don't really remember the words. Um, I, I really don't remember the, the words of it. It's been that long since so I've actually sit, sung the song. But hey, once I remember it, I will sing it before the, uh, I was probably... No, I'm not going to guarantee that. But no, I can't I can't remember it. I'm sorry. But um, great set of questions, man. And also, your final question that you have for me is, what did you think of Full House and the Full House theme song? I thought it was cool. It actually represented what Full House was, in my opinion. That's just how it is. But, um, but yeah, it was a pretty cool show. Very corny, very hokey, but I love every bit of it. And I... And I kind of sort of missed that show, but yeah, it was good for its time. Um, moving on to my next set of questions from Regional D. Huff. I still think you're related to me, but I'll move on from there. What did you think of when Robin Williams took his? What did you think of when Robin Williams took his own life? I was shocked. It was something I really didn't expect. I knew he was struggling with something for the last few years, but I didn't know what. And it just really makes me sad to know that he actually took his own life. Do you think it was selfish of him to take his own life, leaving behind um, those that love him, um, including his family and his friends and his fans? Um, it's kind of difficult for me to even have a dis have a judgment call on that because it's not really up to me to judge. And I know that there are other people out there that are going through the same exact thing that know somebody that has committed suicide, whether or not it was a loved one or, or a friend. Um, so it's not really fair of me to actually place that, that, that call, but... I will say that I know they're sad that he's gone. They wish that they, that he was there, but but yeah, that's just me personally. I think that they really do miss him, and in a time like this, it's you know you don't really want to point fingers. Um, well, not really point fingers, but just you know make a judgment call on that. Um, do you think people who commit suicide goes to hell, or is that just a b bunch of BS? Um, that's not my call, man. It really isn't. Some people can honestly say that, yeah, uh, su be committing suicide is a very selfish act, is a very cowardly act, and some people can say it's, you know, it's it's just an act of, of cowardice. And I won't lie, there was a time that I actually did think that, but it's not up to me to place that judgment call. It isn't. But um, I, as for going to hell, 
it's not my call either for that it really isn't so i'm not gonna really go there when it comes to that um how weird is it that 20 years ago another popular guy in fame died when kurt cobain committed suicide just like robin williams did 20 years later um he may have committed suicide but i don't know if it was the same exact way but i guess it's a morbid way of thinking about it but what makes me really sad is the fact that they both committed suicide and they both were struggling through a lot in their lives they both were going through depression Kurt Cobain was going through a lot. He had a lot of demons in him that he was fighting, but it was just get too, got too much for him. Robin Williams was fighting a lot himself. I had no idea that Robin Williams was going through um, his bout of depression, as well as Kurt Cobain. It just pains me that those guys were in so much pain. These guys were really, really talented in what they did. And it pained me a lot to know that people as talented as those two gentlemen were going through some struggles on the inside but i pray now that they're at peace and i pray that wherever they are that they're at peace and they're happy um well i know well i don't know where they are but you yeah i'm moving on from there um favorite robin williams movies and what did you like most about them i liked aladdin when he played the genie because the genie was like a character that was so full of life and he just made you happy. He was literally the entire movie for me. Not so much Aladdin and Jasmine, but it was all about the genie because the genie really made you happy. Like every time you saw that genie scene or, or um, never met a friend like me, it's probably the most fun scene I've ever seen. He brings life into every character that he's in and I just enjoyed it for that reason. He made The, the genie made me smile. Um... But great questions, man. My next set of questions comes from Final Limits. Um, what if Hornswoggle won a WWE title? I would be like, what? And also, WWE, really? You're running out of ideas? You're really struggling for more ideas, huh? That would probably be my, my reaction to it. What if CM Punk got caught with cocaine and heroin and got arrested? How would you... Uh, how? Uh, got arrested how would you react since he's uh, supposed to be straight edge i'm gonna be real people are human people are human they make mistakes they fail it won't be a big deal to me because i know cm punk is just as human as everybody else and he's gonna fail like everybody else so it wouldn't be a big deal for me but um your next question for me is what if cm uh, what if punk what does punk do at home since he left wwe that's something that you want to tweet him. I have no idea. Can't respond to that. What did you think of David Otunga? His character annoyed me a bit, but then he kind of had a gimmick that worked for a while. And I'm not going to lie, the guy has a nice body, but he was way too greasy. But the thing is, is that he was better off being a member of a nexus or some kind of a faction. He wasn't so good being on his own. But as for him being a part of the whole corporate faction when he was with um John, um, when he was with John Laronitis, when he was played as... Um, lawyer somehow worked but he just didn't have anything to go off from him being a harvard grad so yeah he just fell short and he was a bit bland that's just me was Sin Cara a failed experiment in wwe no they just didn't really know what to do with him and not only that it was a huge culture barrier like culture issue he could not speak good english the the original Sin Cara could not speak english very well the second Sin Cara the whole evil evil versus good Sin Cara kind of worked for a while. But then he was unmasked and then that kind of ended it. But I don't know. It's I wouldn't say it's a failed experiment. It's just they really don't know who he can, who he can feud with. Especially the fact that um, Rey Mysterio is now injured. Again. So where can you go from there? Um, because he was supposed to pass the torch. But we all know that. But anyway. Um, when did you find out that Williams, Williams died? I found out on Monday night, just before Monday Night Raw, I actually saw it all over Twitter and all over Facebook that he passed away. And what confirmed it for me on Facebook was from Brian Go uh, from Brandon Goins. He actually uh, put up um, uh, uh, put up the the actual report on Facebook, and that's how I found out. And I ended up saying on my review, you know, my condolences to his family because I found out even then, and that's just, that was just sad for me. Um. Do you, uh, do you believe in heaven and hell? Yeah, I do. Um, my next set of questions comes from Nintendo Fanboy 1988. Um, what Hell in a Cell match do you think was the worst one ever? 
Oh gosh. Um the one for WrestleMania 28. Yeah. WrestleMania 28 was one of the worst. Um that was the one I guess where everyone remembers um that it was Triple H and Shawn Michaels as a special guest referee versus The Undertaker in the Undertaker Street match. That was one of the worst Hell in a Cells I saw because that was a legendary match. And something that legendary, you want to use a cell in every single way possible, and they barely used it. They didn't even use it at all. They only used it once, and it was sad. I think that was the worst, in my opinion. Um, which superstars do you think Cena buried? Uh, uh, which superstars do you think Cena buried that has recovered from the burial? Um, I can't really say much about our truth I can't. Because the reason what made our truth to be popular, because on there you say, I think our truth in your question, I can't really say our truth because of the fact that our truth brought himself up when he was a heel. But when they made him a face again, that buried him again. So I can't really say that he's out of the graveyard. I think he's still there. He's still there. Um, I, Cena buried so many people. <laughs> uh, but, but either or, I can't really say... I can say somebody who wasn't affected by the burial, and that was Brock Lesnar. Yes, yeah, sure, people are complaining for the fact that Brock Lesnar, the fact that um that Cena won the um Extreme Rules match uh, against Brock Lesnar, saying that it was probably one of the worst, and you know they buried Brock Lesnar. I can't say that they buried him because Brock Lesnar had a life outside of WWE. It didn't affect his career at all. It didn't make him tank. It actually made him more popular. And it actually put the icing on the cake when he beat The Undertaker for, um, for The Undertaker's streak. So honestly, I have to say Brock. Because Brock wasn't affected inside or outside. That's just how I see it. Brock Lesnar, straight up. Um, and moving on from there, uh, your, next set of, your next question for me is, what did you think of Extreme Rules 2012 when he had his first match against Brock Lesnar? <laughs> I was just talking about that. Um, well, okay. Um, I don't think you put over Cena, but either or, Cena pretty much won within an inch of his life. He literally took a beating. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Brock gave every ounce of himself into Cena, and it took every ounce of endurance that Cena had to win that fight. He didn't win cleanly. He won by a fluke, or maybe by booking, but either or, the dude had a battle. Like, as much as it really irked me, the fact that, that he lost and Cena won, Cena fought. Like, he had to fight for that win. So I can't necessarily hate on that anymore, and I can't say that he put Cena over. But I will say that he put himself as well as Cena over because he made himself look like a beast. Either or. The only way that I can say that Brock got buried is when he, um, no, I can't really say that about Triple H because he beat Triple H. But either or, I can't really say that he got buried by Cena around that time. But, um, yeah. What did you think when Cena, when Cena buried the whole entire Nexus? Yes! At SummerSlam 2010. Oh my gosh. Yes. He buried Nexus so bad. That match was pathetic. It really was. Every ounce of the, I love the Nexus. The Nexus was probably one of the most awesome factions since any faction that was around before the PG era kicked in. I love the Nexus. They had a purpose of why they were angry. And they made themselves shown and known that, hey, we won this contest. You guys screwed us, so we're taking over the show. And who led the wonderful Nexus, I have to say, other than Wade Barrett? Way Barry played being a heel so well to whether he literally should have shot to the stratosphere. But he didn't. The fact that he got buried literally in chairs was downright pathetic. Well, honestly, no, that was TLC. But still, at TLC, I think it was one of the worst matches I've ever seen. And as for the entire Nexus getting buried at SummerSlam, yeah, that was outright horrible. But what I'm thinking of to be the worst match ever, the worst burial that John Cena has ever done, was him versus Wade Barrett at TLC. That was terrible. Because Wade Barrett barely put up a fight. Seriously, barely. And he got buried in a bunch of chairs by Cena. Pathetic. Really, really was pathetic. 
I know I went off on a rant here, but I'm sorry that match just pissed me off. Um, if Cena retired tomorrow, how much better do you think wrestling would be since he's killing it? I can't say that he is killing it because let's put it this way. If John Cena's gone, life goes on. They'll find the next big guy to take over. More likely it's going to be Roman Reigns or Randy Orton to take over John Cena. So either or... It won't be that big of a deal. Cena is just a face character. That's all he is. He is the truth, justice, and American way 100% what a baby face really is. And when he's gone, he's gone. Just like when Hogan left, life went on. That's just what's going to be with Cena when he retires. Nothing's going to change with him being there or being gone. They have to come with more ideas. Shoot, with the streak being over. But moving on from there. How much of a <laughs> how much of a douchebag, egotistical prick do you think the Cena is in real life? I will say that Total Divas is not making John Cena look any good. It isn't. It makes John Cena look like a tool. It really, really does. Of how he treats Nikki, the first season really did make him look like a tool because of how he treated Nikki Bella. And honestly, I really don't know how is going to make him look for this season that's coming up in August, which is something I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to season three because I love Total Divas. I really do. And the fact that now, for some reason, Nikki's talking about kids. Yeah. Um, let's see how far John Cena goes with that. And I don't think he's going to go that far. I really don't. But moving on from there to the talking jet the talking dildo dude that is a most interesting name i've ever heard in my life but anyway this is my final set of questions from jack the talking dildo i'm sorry i had to say your name again uh what are your thoughts on city lopper and her 80s look back then and what do you think of boy george and his song um karma chameleon i'm an 80s chick i love it i seriously do i absolutely love 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 that song i will forever love that song Straight up. And I love Cindy Lauper too. Girls, this would have fun. What did you think of Billy Joel and his song Uptown Girl? I thought it was cool. I liked it. I enjoyed it a lot. It was kind of fun. Um, have you ever watched the films Sandlot and Sandlot 2? Didn't watch Sandlot 2, but watch the Sandlot. Sandlot is classic. If you haven't watched it, watch it. Good movie. Really good movie. Um, what did you think of Cindy Lauper's 1983's Girls Just Wanna Have Fun? I love Captain Lou. Captain Lou was in it. Nuff said. Made me really, really happy. And not to mention, I love Cindy Lauper. And she still looks good today as she did back then. It's like her face doesn't age. That woman is still as beautiful then. And, and she's also beautiful now. And your final question for me is, do you remember a song from back then when you were in high school or in college in 83? Honestly, I was three years old in 83. I was born in 1980. So I'm a, I'm a baby of the 80s. Actually, I'm more like a child of the 80s, in other words. So I wasn't 10 until like 1990. But honestly, in 83, I wasn't in high school until like 1994. So yeah, I really wasn't in school back then. So yeah, there's not really a lot of songs that you remember when you're three. I do remember a lot of Key Sweat when I was six, but that's pretty much it. But guys, thank you so much for sending me questions. If you have any other questions for me, by all means, send, it, send them to my YouTube inbox or on Twitter at RKA30, hashtag Nature Girl q and I do believe that I actually do have something on Twitter, so I can't officially close out yet. Um, but I do I believe that I have something from Mr. Large S85. He actually did send something to me via Twitter, something I never really expected. But his question for me is this. What do you think of Heath Slater? Q&A. And it's right here. You probably can't see it because it's white. By the or, that's from Largest 85. And what do I think of Heath Slater? I actually think that Heath Slater was a fun character, but unfortunately he can't reinvent himself, so he's going to probably can soon. But that is my thoughts. Largest didn't leave you out, man. But thanks so much for sending me questions, guys. Like I said before, send me via YouTube if you have any other questions or on Twitter at RKA30, hashtag Nature Girl Q&A. Stay tuned to my SummerSlam preview or predictions that is going to be put up tomorrow. It's Nature Girl 30 signing off. Peace out, y'all. Later.